Hello and welcome back to Let's Play 9999 nine, nine, nine Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. I've actually learned I've been saying it wrong this entire time, and I'm very sorry to all those fans. Please stop beating me up. I know, and I love the Zero Escape series so far, so SHUT UP! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> let's get back to it. And, uh, sorry, that was some damn good ice cream. It turned around and took all. Uh, hold on. It took out down the left, the hallway to the left. Outside the first cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring meaninglessly, meaninglessly pointing on the wall. Her eyes blank. What should you play do? Talk to her, obviously. Are you all right? He was best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. Look, I know you're really worried, but, um... He couldn't think of... He couldn't think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow or fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was consumed by worry and fear. Junpei feared it would crush her. <clears throat> her actions didn't surprise him. She suddenly lost her brother, who seemed to have been, Who seemed to have been very close to... Lone. Her voice was then bare barely audible. Alone. Alone. I said leave me alone. She's suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying, just go away, leave me alone. Just, just looking at you guys pissing me off. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else. Stop bothering me. <clears throat> Junpei was taken aback. Such anger and hate, Junpei's eyes suddenly got wide surprise and was surprised as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just Alright, let's go let's go, Jun. Yeah. <clears throat> they turned and left Clover. As they did, Junpei glanced back over his shoulder, seeing Clover wipe the tears from her face. Clover had driven home in the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. For Clover, Clover's sake, they had to find Snake and fast. It is best to push away the misery and depression and force a smile. So where do you think we should go next? Well, we've, the, we've already done the casino, so we have all the rooms. Let's do the large one. Let's go back to the hospital room. Alright, that's probably the best idea. Together, they ran down the stairs. <clears throat> On the way to the large hospital room, Jupe and Jun noticed Santa standing next to the door three. Jupe paused. What should Jupe do? Jupe and Jun walked up to Santa. What are you doing? What, can't you tell? I'm checking out the red. Why is there something bothering you? No, it's not Bob. What is it bothering? It's bo not bothering you, huh? <clears throat> this. The red of this. The guts of this red. Why did. Why wouldn't you wonder what, who the hell put them back in here? It, yeah, that's true. I'm curious too, but. What do you. Th who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? <clears throat> Who do you think fixed the thing, this thing for us? Hmm. Let's see. Snake's gone missing, so it would kind of be an obvious suggestion to go for Snake. But since Snake is blind, it would probably be something that would be really odd. How could he do it? How could he pull it off? He was blind, so he couldn't just have been blatantly staring there. Lotus doesn't even really think very much about it. In fact, she knows the fact that every, that at least three of the people are going to die, apparently. Zero might be an, a very, very good suspect for this. Because, one, he's sneaky. Two, he's like really really smart and three he knows how to like screw with people that's how the ninth man probably went insane <clears throat> so
So, it's either someone that wasn't of the eight of them and zero, or it was zero. Um... You know, let's put it into a broader uh, suspicion. Let's say it was someone new. Maybe there's someone else on the ship with us. You mean someone's hiding here? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just an idea. And you're saying the mystery person fixed the reds? Yeah. Why? That's, um, I don't know. Santa shoved his hands into his pocket and cracked his knuckles. Seems unlikely. Why? I don't know, just a feeling. Hard to believe Zero is bringing the secret 10th player. But bringing the secret 10th player. Then the game of the... Then the name of the game is the Nottery game, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> you know what Nottery means, right? It means 9. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, more likely someone who's been... Someone who's been living here for a long time. Or someone who, like, stayed here. Seriously? That's even more ridiculous. Why do you think Zero would leave them alone? Should we have frowned his brows? So in other words, one of us is the person that fixed the reds. Send a green. Bingo! We have a winner. But if that's true, then the person who did it... Wait. Did it doesn't want the rest of us to know. They fixed the reds. Yeah. But why? No idea. Maybe if they come, maybe if they come clean on that, it means that we found something. We found something else. Someone, something bad. Something bad. Don't know. But whatever it is, it's got to be worth hunt. It's got to be worth hiding. Hmm. Of course. It could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. You think maybe some, maybe they did something to Snake? It's not another question. Junpei stared at Santa. There was something about him that made Junpei weary. At first, he'd assumed the other man wasn't terribly clever, but Junpei was beginning to think that he would need to reevaluate that assessment. <clears throat> when Santa spoke, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anyone in this game, you're gonna lose. You've gotta be careful. The person you trust can most likely be turn out the one who stabs you in the back. With that depressing suggestion, he turned and quietly walked away. Junpei and June looked at one another, smiling aw smiled awkwardly. <laughs> Where should we go next? <clears throat> I want to check the other hallway, because we weren't talking this uh, ace. I'll go wherever you do. Let's go. They quickened their pace and headed for the battle. There was no sign of anyone. Snake, of course, was nowhere to be found. I would have to look somewhere else, but where? So that means that it ended at the large hospital room. They turned back to the large hospital room. There was no one here. What next? Just finished searching? No. I want to see more! Why don't we go check the first class cabin? Thank you. Um, something I actually wanted to talk about is, um... Just a moment ago, there was fireworks going off. I wish I was recording then because that would have been like, Wow! And wow! And that would have been really cool. That was not there. You may have figured that it was more like somewhere else. But where? Always across the room? Why don't we go back to see it? Oh, I thought that said the other way. Derp. No one's there. Oh, we can't even go back there, can we? Let's try the casino. Take a look around the casino. Okay, let's go. He turned his head and headed towards the deck. There was no one there. They had no choice. You and June turned around and headed in different location. Uh. Alright, yeah, we're gonna have to finish the search. There's no there's no idea. We looked li literally everywhere. We didn't talk to Ace though. 
searching. They looked everywhere they could think of, but Snake was nowhere to be found. Lotus looked around at the six frustrated faces and spoke. We can't keep looking for Snake. Wherever he is, it's not here. We need to get moving. Jupe could, couldn't disagree with what she was saying. Snakes seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point in wasting any more time. The others seemed to have a similar thought, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. We're, we're not going to find Snake. There's a problem, though. We have to figure out who's going to go through which door. Yes. I have a proposal. She walked back and forth across the room, her heels clicking against the wood. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide one person to sacrifice? Sacrifice? Well, perhaps it... That's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all figured out it by... You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? We can't make it through those doors. If we split into two teams, four or three people, respected, then the three people will be left behind. If we split into two teams, two and five, respectively, two people will be left behind. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then we have one, and one person will be left behind. We leave behind three people with two teams of four and three. Um, well, we can go through the door. Okay, let me think here. <laughs> Quick, mental calculator, as someone actually wrote in the comments. So, let's see here. The numbers we have are 1 to 8, excluding 2. So, three people to go through. There are 7, 8, and 3. So. Seven, eight, and three. Those are our numbers. The numbers we have are one. Let me see here. Um, we don't have to go all through each doors, do we? Wait, what if we do? Oh, that's right. We have to go through a door each. We each have to go through a door, though. But if we leave one person behind... Wait a minute. If we left behind two people, then if Snake was ever showed up, then Snake could possibly help the other two through the door, but they'd have to be a number that goes with the door. Uh, Snake equals two. So the ones that would have to stay behind are Clover and Seven. Because that would make... So... Clover equals 4, Snake equals 2, and 7 equals... 7. So put that all together. Uh... So... That's 6. 6 plus 7, that's 11. Oh, that's not 11. Derp! That's 13! That equals four. So we'd have to leave someone else. Uh, if we left behind four people, that'd be crazy. Because then only three people would go through the door. Or four people. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going crazy here. Um. God, I gotta think about this. Um. Yeah, she's right. It wasn't pleasant, but she was right. There wasn't any way, any way the number numbers would work out. If one group was four, the other group would have a digital group that didn't match the door. When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then you're saying we gotta decide who stays behind? Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's, log it's logical and moral to get the situation. If six, peop if six are to survive, and one person to be sac and one person sacrifices himself. No, that's too cruel. What's so cruel about it? To, to sacrifice someone like that? 
Then what's your plan? Maybe we sacrifice two people instead of just one? That's not what I mean. We shouldn't sacrifice anyone. I told you, it's impossible. Wake up. Whoa, whoa, calm down, you two. Send a step between Lotus and June. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is that we should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Exactly. That's how democracy works. For that reason, I think it's only fair that we fair way to decide who will be sacrificed through a vote. What do you think? No, that's terrible. I'm not asking you. Shut up. What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree, I guess. That's right. One vote for one vote counting mine. That's two, seven. I can't say I agree with you, but we don't exactly have a choice. If we do some, if we don't do something, we're all going to die. Glad you, glad to see you get it. All right, if I can get one more vote, then it's decided. What about you, Clover? Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body had dropped. Jupe didn't know if she'd heard Lotus' proposal. She walked over to Clo Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid her hand on her shoulder. Her brother has to be, be behind one of the numbered doors. We search everywhere, but we couldn't find him. Doesn't that mean he, had, he has gone through one of them somehow? Clo Clover slowly looked her face. Let's go look for him together. To sacrifice one person, then we, we can go look for him. You agree with me, right? Clover nodded once. The motion carries. Let us spun around and walk towards Jim Pack. Now let's start the vote too. That won't be necessary. He said barely spoken had barely spoken for Lotus' entire speech and everyone jumped a little. Six pairs of eyes turned and looked at him. He didn't seem to notice it, or even care. I'll say. That'll solve her pro that should solve her problems, yes? Uh, Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that, it won't solve anything. June's voice shook as she laid as she looked around desperate for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust in each and one of you. Each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic and then there's just nuts. The words only go one way. You go in and you don't come out. If we go through them, you won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True, but that won't be the case once you've escaped the ship. But... Please, I beg you, once you escape, come back and rescue me. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous. There's no way we get back in time. Only Junpei could, could hold his tongue no longer. We've got five hours left. We don't even know where the hell we are. How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? Then perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me. Or perhaps you'd be willing to leave June behind. Ace's voice was dignified, without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. You see, there's no other choice. And I see we come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yourselves over me. Go quickly. Junpei stood fro frozen by his indecision, unable to move. June bit her lip. So hard, Junpei feared she would break her skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Simon tore his beanie from his head and turned over his anxious turned over his ancient head. Only Clover stared at Ace with an expression Jupiter was unable to decipher. Lotus out added to everyone was different from the others. Good. Let's accept this kind of offer. She smiled, her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good, I think it's the best for me. I'll be able to take a nap. Perhaps not. My age, I'm so tired of it. I tire so easily these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to a bed. From somewhere deep in the ship, suddenly Junpei heard screeching metal on the metal. 
It's almost as if the ship wasn't we're screaming. It would would it really hold up a time limit? D deck was already flooded. It's it, in sudden silence the ship was sad metal wall of the ship. The only sound on the sad metal wall of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry up? As if the spell was broken, the others all began to talk at once. Alright, we should get going. That's all we can do. Seven. Seriously, honestly, I was kind of getting sick of listening to you guys talk. You too, Santa? I have to find my brother. Whoa, 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 all of you, just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone everyone out. There has to be. Right, Jumpy? You say something. Yeah, let's think. There's got to be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine. Forget about it. Forget it. All about it. I'll figure it out on my own. She spun around and ran towards Ace. Ace had slumped down next to a bed when June grabbed his hand and pulled him. Come on, Ace, please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure a way out. A way that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. Ace fell forward. He slumped over on the wood floor, his body fallen half like boxer boxer out cold. Ace! June cried and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did the best to lift him up. What happened, Ace? Say something. She shook him frantically. His eyes fluttered open. I'm alright. His voice was weak and silent, slurred. How are you fine? This. He held his left arm and showed his hand open. A syringe with a small vial. The vial is empty. It only been recently empty. A few drops clung to the side. Uh, labeled taped to the side of the container. It read, Sporeal Beta. Junpei had no idea what it meant or what kind of medicine it might be. D did you use this? Yes. It's just an anesthetic. I'll be fine. Anesthetic? I found it earlier while we were searching the hospital rooms. I thought it might be useful later. Huh, I didn't think of using it on myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. I really am very tired. <laughs> okay, that was kind of scary, but that was actually kind of laughable. Because, like, yeah, he wanted to take a nap, and he did take an anesthetic for it. Which is what an anesthetic does. It makes your body weaker. So that was actually kind of a humorous thing to me. Either I'm some sort of sick, sadistic bastard, or I really should be in a mental hospital right now. Yeah. <laughs> Jupe know that knew that wasn't why he had done it. Ace injected himself with an anesthetic to for force the tile Jupe in June intends to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they could do. He injected himself so it would be, wouldn't be forced to leave him behind. Or they would be forced to leave him behind. Hmm. Is there something you want to say? I'd like some sleep. I'd like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No! Don't, Ace. Don't fall asleep. Ah, you feel worn. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Ace's eyes would draw further and further. Almost as though he was dying. Ace! Ace! <laughs> she shook his shoulders again and again, but this time he didn't respond. Only only the gentle rise and falling of his chest, uh, chest told him he was alive. Jupe was relieved to see he was in fact still breathing. He lifted Ace off up of the floor and laid him on a bed he'd been leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. We really don't have a choice now. 
we can't let a sacrifice go to waste, right? She wasn't really feeling any remorse, Junpei was sure of that. Still, he held no grounds which the opposer. He felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? We haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, yes, that's true. Well, enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? Uh, I want door number eight. Same number as my bracelet. Got it. You're eight. You're next, seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with all. With I can't get along with that old lady. What? What did you just? Say? <laughs> Her face distorted by rage. Lotus took a step towards seven. He threw his hand and made a. Threw up his hands and made it. He's like a child. God, caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Ugh. I'm really gonna get it next time. She shot a glare. <laughs> she shot him with a glare that would have melted steel, then turned, turned and stalked off. All right, then who's next? Send the gaze across the three people left. Finally, it stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. Okay, which one do I want? <laughs> um, I have to go with someone. Who do I want to go with? Does it mean June make nine? I'll go through door number three. Because I want to be with Clover. I want to go through door number three. No. You can't. Huh? Why? Because it's impossible. We split ourselves into three and then we get... Then we give up on going through door three. Why? The bracelet number for the six of us is three, four, five, seven... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are two combinations that can't go through door number three. Three, four, five, or seven, eight. Or six, seven, eight. That's it. Of course, two teams can't go through the same door. I see. That means that the team I would get left behind with. That's right. That doesn't happen. But doesn't that happen if we go through door seven or eight? No, they're fine. We've got three options. Santa began to explain. Plan A. Go through door 7 with 3, 5, and 8. And go through 8 with 4, 6, and 7. Plan B. Go through door with 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, and 7. And go through door with 3, 6, 8. Plan C. Go through door 7 with 3, 6, eight. Three, six 7. And go through... Okay, well, I want to get near Clover, so... Well, just because I want to be there for her, because I'm that nice guy that really wants to be there when someone's down. To get through door number, s to get through door number seven, we need three, six, seven, and four. Okay, so yeah, those are the three options. That's it. At least we want to get. At least if we want to get all six of us out of here. That's when Junpei realized. <laughs> Plan A divides two teams. Three, five. Three, five, eight. So that would be Santa, me, and Lotus. And four, six, and seven. That would be Clover, June, and seven. Plan A divides it into the combination I want. Four, seven, four, five, seven, and three, six, eight. And the other one, I want plan B. There's only one thing they had in common. Every single combination, five and six, were never on the same team. In other words, if all six people were to follow Jun, follow Jun Junpei would be separated. Jun and Junpei had been friends when they were kids. He had trusted her more than anyone else on the ship. If he chose seven or eight, he'd, take, he'd be taken away from her. Was, was that something we were, he was prepared to do? Anyways, that's the deal, so I think it's over. You got two choices, seven or eight. You can't choose three. If you choose three, we're gonna be leaving three people behind to die. So what are you gonna do? Seven or eight. 
time to choose. Shinpei thought hard. After thinking his conclusion was... Uh, <laughs> if I take the risk, the I'm only doing run run of this game. And my friend Ted's already played through this and he told me there's a really really good ending that it that would be ideal for me to get. <laughs> But the thing is, is, I need Ace, and he just passed himself out. <laughs> because, whatever. Um... <sighs> I don't know what the combination of people is, but I want to be with Clover so that I can have the- I can be that pat on the back person. And she can only go through door number seven. So... Guess who's going with seven? Okay, okay, fine. I'll go with door 7. Okay, so 7. Yeah. Alright, then that means June's gotta go through 8. Huh? Why? June's face is blank and confused. Santa muttered to himself and turned to Junpei. Junpei, you figured it out, right? Can you explain to her? Alright, well... We'll choose those words carefully next time on Let's Play 999. I am Hero and I'll see you all next time. Bye!